It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction Beanie Yo 410. Day in that neighborhood. My brothers and sisters. So yesterday, I put up a poll on our channel. Just basically asking y'all, do y'all want me to start reacting to Adrian from Coffee House Crime every Friday? Because Adrian, man, he put in work, y'all. Like, he put out, I think, like, two videos every week. You know what I'm saying? And I love his channel personally. And if y'all want me to start watching a video with y'all every week from him, we most definitely can make that happen. So if you get a chance, just go vote yes or no. Either way it goes, the majority will win. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to go from there. But I digress. For now, today is Wednesday, my brothers and sisters. So y'all know who we about to go back to. Mike from that chapter. That chapter Wednesdays, y'all. And I hope y'all doing excellent out there today. And I'm glad that you came on back to the channel once again. To fuck with the bean. And the title of this one is The Disturbing Case of Logan Clegg. Ain't no telling what the hell Logan got going on, y'all. All I'ma say is, if it's anything like the one we watched last week from Mike, then we in for a ride, and it's about to be in crazy. But before we see how disturbing and crazy this story is, my brothers and sisters, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you might need. Get what you need, please. We back to Mike from that chapter. Y'all got what y'all need? Y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking go. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, we are off to New Hampshire to, to guess what? To talk about Logan. Because there is something very wrong with him. When a beloved couple went missing while out for their routine walk in the woods, an investigation began. And on the surface, this seemed to lead to this strange man living in the woods. Mountain Dew Man, as he would later be known. A man with a streak of violence. But, just like a little digging, seemed to uncover a man with a history of connections, world travel, money, and maybe some evil that could turn this story on its head. Please subscribe if you want to see new true crime videos every week. Now, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. and get whatever you may need. So this story takes us to the city of Concord, New Hampshire. The city of Concord lies in Southern New Hampshire. It's the capital of the state and it has a population of a little over 40,000 people. It's a compact, cozy little New England city. It's got the historical charm, the quality of life, and the beautiful scenery pretty close by. On the eastern side of the city, you cross the Merrimack River and you keep on trucking, lies this area called Alton Woods. There's a load of these apartment buildings, it's leafy, it's perfectly situated between the bustling city and the tempting countryside. And that was where an older couple, they were in their like mid-sixties, Stephen and Wendy, she went by Wendy, Reed, that's where they lived. Stephen, in 2022, was 67 years old, a local Concord born and raised. He later attended the University of Notre Dame, and after receiving full scholarships to a number of law schools, Stephen decided no. He wanted to dedicate his life to those around him, and so instead of heading off and getting like a, you know, working as a lawyer or whatever, he instead decided to join the Peace Corps. He worked in West Africa mm. for a number of years before returning to the US to work at the headquarters in DC. And it was then that Steve met the love of his life, Wendy. 
Wendy, 66 years old in 2022, was born in Togo and travelled a lot as a youth as part of the national basketball team. She eventually landed in the US after earning scholarships, and while studying in DC, she met Steve. They were in fact introduced by a mutual friend who knew that Stephen could speak a West African language that she spoke, and so kind of took off from there. When I don't like what is going, y'all. And Mike telling us this great story about this beautiful couple and how they met at this young age and now they in their sixties and man, I don't even want to say what I think's gonna happen, but we all know what more than likely about to happen to these people, man. Let's go. Wendy, the outgoing extrovert, Steve, the quieter introvert, and they married in 1984 and will later have two children together. Steve would go on to work with a number of NGOs, working on issues like climate change, uh, food security, working back in West Africa, in Bangladesh, in Haiti, uh, Wendy always by his side. Stephen became a real leader, a well-respected guy. Wendy the same, working in universities, helping with refugee resettlement. Very noble causes, the both of them. They were in Haiti in 2010 when that like devastating earthquake hit and they stayed because they just wanted to help out. Then they later went back to Africa to, to try and help people there. And in 2019, after a lifetime of just helping people, you know, they felt needed help. They decided they were getting older. They went back home to conquer New Hampshire to, you know, be with their family and their friends. They retired. They did everything together, a very beautiful couple, and one of their favorite things to do was to go hiking, walk in the woods, something they did regularly. And so this is when our story begins, April 20th, 2022. Stephen and Wendy, they went out for a walk, you know, in them woods. They didn't return. They hadn't answered texts or phone calls, neither. See, it was Wednesday, April 20th, and that day there was a family event that Stephen and Wendy were both due to attend. And when they didn't show, when they didn't show their faces, people were like, that's very unlike them. Very good, odd, odd. And so then people began talking, were like, I haven't actually heard from Stephen or Wendy in a couple of days, not since Monday. That was Monday, April 18th. Last time they'd heard from Stephen when, you know, they'd been texting each other pretty briefly and Stephen had said himself and Wendy were going out for one of their usual walks. That was it. The couple would often go for a walk in the nearby Marsh Loop Trail, directly across the interstate from their home. Marsh Loop is a two mile hike through the woods. It's peaceful and pretty as it takes you through this, as the name suggests, marshy New England terrain. So with the family becoming you know, pretty worried at this stage, they eventually went to the, the Reed's apartment in Alton, Alton Woods. In the entry to the apartment, they found nothing. Their phones, there was two phones there, keys, purses, money, whilst their cars were still parked outside their apartment. It seemed like they'd gone for that walk, it takes about 45 minutes, they hadn't been expecting to be gone long, but simply hadn't come back. And if you just pay attention to what Mike said earlier, man, they went on this trail, like, you know what I'm saying, fairly often, like a lot. Like, this was like a normal routine for them. So whoever did this, man, they knew about them walking on that trail, and that's when they decided to freaking attack. And how many videos we gonna watch about people getting attacked on these damn walking trails and in these parks, and you know what I'm saying, man? Like, oof. My brothers and sisters, watch your damn back while you're while you out going for a jog. That's all I can say, man. Jesus Christ. I just hate it because of the age that these people is. I, I just hate when elderly people end up being a victim of murder. You know what I'm saying? They live all their freaking life to get to retirement where they just supposed to live out the rest of their days without any more care in the world or burden or anything. You know what I'm saying? This supposed to be the golden age of their life. And then somebody come and end it. I just hate that, man. I hate that. I hate when anybody get murdered. But y'all get what I'm saying, man. I hate when elderly people get murdered, bro. That shit just sick. In fact, that was exactly what had happened. So with that frightening thought, the couple were reported missing to the Congress Police Department. Police arrived, searched the apartment, and then being informed of the couple's usual routine, began to comb 
the Marsh Loop Trail area. Well, investigators admit this is a very strange situation. They have no idea where this couple is right now. Concord police say they were reported missing last night, that they were last seen by family on Easter and were last heard from on Monday. Now, as far as they know, investigators say the Reeds had said that they were going for a hike near where they live, but it's not clear where they were going. It was shortly after the police, you know, went into those woods that they stumbled across this little encampment just there, like not far off the main trail. There was a tent, few other items kind of lying around. There's a, there a young fellow there, just camping out. Not a bother on him. Now, the police didn't know if he was camping there, if he was homeless, or if he was simply just, you know, passing through, hiking through the woods. So the police, they asked him, they said, hell yeah, you know, we're here, we're looking for this couple. We believe they came to these woods and haven't been seen since. Your man says, don't know what you're talking about. Haven't seen them, haven't seen anything. And he said he was from Boston, Massachusetts. He said he didn't know shit, that his name was Arthur Kelly, and he was 30 years old. Now, interestingly, when the police ran this name, just to be sure, it came up blank. There was no Arthur Kelly in the system. When told of this, Arthur was like, well, I'm, I'm well within my rights to camp wherever I want, so talk to the hand. The police, they didn't ask for ID. They said, you know, you're not in trouble, but they, they had bigger fish to fry. They let him be. They kept searching the woods for the reeds. They left his Arthur Kelly and his campsite. A campsite which, by the way, was covered with Mountain Dew Code Red cans. Hey, gotta do the do. And so they kept. Man, if it's actually this dude, then that's freaking crazy that he got. And I think it is him. I think he gave him a fake name, Arthur Kelly or whatever, but it's really Logan Clegg. But it's just crazy that he had the audacity to do this to this couple. And then still stay up in the woods. Still, you still got your uh, tent pitched up in the woods. Like you still camping out in the place where you done <sighs> murdered these people. You know what I'm saying, man? Like the audacity of him. Drinking his goddamn uh Mountain Dew Cold Reds. I ain't had a Mountain Dew Cold Red in years, y'all. Like years, years, man. You know what? Tomorrow, I'm gonna buy me a Mountain Dew Cold Red just for the hell of it. Let's go. Kept looking. They continued searching that night, April 20th, and began a full-scale search at first light on April 21st. Now, the two phones the, that were found in the Reed's apartment, the police assumed that one was Stevens and one was Wendy's, but no, neither were Stephen Reed's phones. So the police were having a little, you know, little thinky think about that, and then, well, that means Stephen probably has his phone with him, wherever he is. They submitted a request to Google for location information. It was at 5 p.m. on the 21st, while the entire area was being searched, that they got back that data. And indeed, the couple had gone there, had gone to Marsh Loop Trail on April 18th. Stephen and Wendy Reed had entered Marsh Loop Trail at 2.48 p.m. The phone's last data signal was from an area off trail in the woods at 3.47 p.m. So detectives, searchers, and sniffer dogs went to where the phone had last pinged. Oh, shit. And at 6.14 p.m., dogs took interest in a pile of leaves and sticks. This was in a natural depression in the earth. And under that, indeed, were the bodies of the couple. It was a horrifying conclusion and a terrifying realization when the medical examiner would be able to say both Stephen and Wendy had been shot dead. Stephen shot four times, Wendy twice. It then seemed they had been dragged here and covered. And so a double homicide investigation began. Yeah, this this is a elfed up one, y'all. But I, I, this is the little crazy stuff that be going through my mind, man. It it ain't really crazy. It's really terrifying. Like for real, I'm being for real, y'all. When when Mike said both of them had been found shot to death, the first thing that really like went through my mind at that moment was like, because I I always be putting trying to put myself in these people's shoes. And this in this particular situation, what I'm saying is. Who got shot first? And the reason I ask that because think about you and your loved one about to get murdered, about to get killed, about to get shot by somebody. And would you rather be shot first or would you rather uh, be shot last and actually have to watch or see or hear your, your, uh, your significant other being killed? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's I'd rather get shot first. Kill me first because I don't want to see that, man. 
I do not want to freaking see that at all, man. It is just a horrible and terrifying just thought to have of watching your partner get shot, your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, even anybody in your family, anybody you care about, knowing that they just got killed and knowing you next. Like, it's just a, man, you, you get, man, 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 it, it, it's some horrible ways to die. And that right there is at the top of the line, y'all. That really is. Investigators spent last night into this afternoon scouring the area for evidence, and now the attorney general's office is calling on the public for help. So anyone who saw the reeds that Monday afternoon, anyone walking on those trails, anyone who has any information related to their disappearance or deaths are asked to contact the Concord Police Department. And so the police were already suspicious of this Arthur Kelly fellow because they knew he had given them a false name. And his campsite was only a half mile in the woods from where the Reed's bodies had been found. And so police went back to his campsite. He was gone. And he was gone. Yeah. When they went there on April 22nd, it was completely clean. Not even a single can of Mountain Dew was left. It was like this Arthur Kelly had never been there at all. Not any, nothing was left behind. Maybe he went back to Mass, who knows, but he quickly became their key suspect. Two witnesses who frequented the area would also come forward around that time. One said he always walked in the woods, and he too had noticed a campsite, a separate one from where they'd first met Arthur Kelly. This witness, who had seen this separate campsite in those same woods, had been keeping an eye on it since January, so he'd been, like, you know, you know checking on it every time he went for his normal walk for about four months by this stage, but... Just after the bodies of the reeds were found, next time we went for that same walk, he noticed this time the campsite was burnt out and abandoned. Police, when they were told of this, they didn't initially, you know, think it was related until they went and checked it out, and Mountain Dew Code Red cans were found there too. Also found were some propane tanks, a number of small items, and some Euro coins. And another witness would come forward saying she had been on Marsh Loop Trail on Monday, April 18th, the day the reeds went there, and were killed at about the same time. She'd been hiking in those woods with her two dogs. She had seen a white man and a black woman walk past her. Assumably, the reeds, they, and then uh, they walked ahead of her, and after then about 10, five, 10 minutes, she says she heard gunshots, five separate gunshots. She wasn't sure if she could continue. She decided to, and as she kept walking, then she saw a young man standing on the side of the trail not far from where the bodies would later be found. She said this young man didn't say anything, but he was just like Manson lamps staring at her the entire time. She passed him without a word, but when she looked back, he was still staring at her. A man, she lucky as hell he didn't kill her. Like seriously, man, she, that lady there, that witness there is lucky that she got away with her life in that situation. She literally walked past a man who just murdered two people. Woo. I know she thanking God every day. Thank God. I'm thanking God for God damn it. Shit. Sketch of a man's profile. Someone investigators say was seen near the wooded trail where Stephen and Wendy Reed were mysteriously shot to death last month. He is someone that investigators believe may have information about these crimes as either a witness or a suspect. The police were now on the hunt to find this Mountain Dew man, as you would be known. Over the following weeks, more locals would come forward saying they too had seen this Mountain Dew man. They all thought he was homeless. He was seen multiple times between November 2021 and April 2022. Clean shaven, neatly dressed, but unfriendly to people. Often would only give a curt nod when passed if even that, more likely to get a sarcastic reply. One person even said they'd heard him yelling and screaming to himself. And they would all say he wasn't seen again after the murders. Police then went to a nearby Walmart to see if they could find where those propane tanks had been purchased. And indeed, he had been shopping at that Walmart, this Mountain Dew man. A young man would come in, buy prone propane tanks, go off into the woods. No one knew anything about him, though. He rarely spoke. He never spoke, to be honest with you. So nobody, he was always kind of wearing like hoods, masks, and not seen again after the bodies were found. The police had no idea who he was and continued to search through the burnt out campsite, hoping to learn his identity. And at one point, they did find a spent shell casing matching those at the crime scene. So they're pretty sure the same guy had camped at both campsites. 
It wasn't until September or that a real break in the case came, if you can believe that. So they were just trying to find out who this guy was, get his identity, but they didn't even know where to begin. Other than the fact that he loved Mountain Dew Code Red, what they did is they went back to that Walmart he was seen shopping at a number of times, and it went through every transaction he had made, and he'd tread all of these transactions for the months he had been living there. He'd used five separate credit or debit cards. Now, Dang. trying to trace those cards led nowhere. They were all prepaid cards. So none linked to a name, and then getting the statements from those cards, transactions also didn't lead to a name. Except one transaction. Mm. There had been a purchase from BulkSupplements.com. Several vitamins were ordered to be delivered to a Walgreens near the woods. ID needed to be presented to collect the order. The order had been made by a Logan Clegg. Images of him were the same as the Mountain Dew Man. Got him. See, he tried, y'all. He was trying his damnest to cover up his steps and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Using credit card, prepaid credit cards and stuff like that. But he fucked up. He tried his best. But boy, it's just take that one little slip up and your ass is grass. And his ass is grass. Deservedly so. They finally had a name. His real, his real name. They hadn't come across it before, and in the system it brought up Logan Clegg, DOB, January 24th, 1996, and he had been arrested twice before, once in Salt Lake City for shoplifting in August 2020. He's out. Uh... Go back to play. Stop. Go back to play. Pull your hands out of your pockets for me, okay? Pull your hands out of your pocket, dude. Let's go. Pull your hands out. Don't be dumb. Remember, don't be dumb. Okay. Yeah. Wait. What's this? This. Open up your fist. Open up your fist. You're going to go into handcuffs right now because you wouldn't follow our commands to keep your hands out of your pockets. Which makes us worry. And it's cute and it worries us, so we're going to make sure. And that's why you pull your hands out, right? Because if we see that, whew, that could have been super bad, bro. You want to blame the cops for your mistakes. Super weird. I'm blaming you for turning shit. Let me uh, face the car for me. None of us have, but it's our fault. Oh, it's our fault? Yeah. He had a stolen gun and stole from Walmart? Yeah. It's our fault. And I'll try to put in a request to have you do different things next. Okay. Hey, Logan, do you understand why you're going to jail? Oh. No? Okay. Well, let me explain it to you again. On jail's second degree felony for possession of a stolen firearm. Misdemeanor A, carrying a concealed weapon without a concealed weapons permit. Stolen. And retail theft because you stole from Walmart. Is that even worth twenty five dollars? I don't have any idea. Does they haven't they haven't added it up yet, but how can they charge me besides worth that much? Well the state I, I, yeah, I don't know what I don't know uh, what state doesn't charge people for thefts under twenty-five dollars, but in Utah, if you steal some, if you take something without paying for it, it's called theft. I'm still shaking from the fact of you not cooperating initially and having a gun on. That's the part that I'm still like, just still in shock about, y'all. I cannot leave. I can't let go the fact that this freaking guy was it digging in his pockets, got his hands in his pockets, and he got a damn gun in there. Dude, your ass could have... Well, he probably don't kill. He one of the people who don't kill. The police would have shot the shit out your ass. They would have seen any little shiny thing, any little glistle come from up out of your pocket. Your ass would have been grass, bro. Like, oh, hell no. That is crazy. Like, that's so dangerous. I don't know, bro. Like, how am I supposed to do? Shut up. <laughs> Now I'm a coward, huh? Okay. Yeah, three on one, okay. ambushing me at the door, putting me in handcuffs. Called safety, and I'm glad that that was the case. How would you propose we do that differently? But you give me a if chance. You were in my so we can if you were in my, if you were in my shoes, that's what you want. Yeah. Okay. Man to man. First off, you wouldn't stand any chance whatsoever. Good. Another die. Prison. Second. Okay. For a simple shoplifting, he made a scene. Three officers took him down, and he said he wanted to die rather than go to prison but he did have a stolen gun on him. 
19 days later, he was arrested again, this time during a break, a burglary in progress, an armed burglary in progress. He had another stolen handgun on him. He got 72 days in jail for that and was sentenced to three years probation. He also had an active warrant out for another burglary from a town in Utah, northern Utah, called uh, Logan, funnily enough. No right. He was wanted for skipping out on that probation. Logan Clay. But see, everything that's going on with Logan so far, and I'm not excusing none of it, you know what I'm saying? These are crimes that he committed, but none of these crimes have to do with harming people yet. You know what I'm saying? He's just stealing shit. And, and it, well, I guess in a way, it, it you can say that uh, burglarizing a place is harming people, but I'm talking about, like, he ain't been... Uh, charged with assault and battery on somebody or whooping somebody ass or pulling a gun out on somebody like finna kill them like, y'all get what i'm saying man none of them have to actually do with that but it's just like how did you go from just being a freaking thief to being a murderer like is all that stuff like in the same realm to y'all do it all kind of like mash up together or it, it is kind of like separate like you got your stillers then you got your killers all i know is you do got your stillers and your killers together but i don't know i'm just trying to say how did we get to this level man to him deciding okay i'm, I'm tired of stealing shit i want to go murder somebody you get what i'm saying man i know some of y'all do but let's go Clegg, 26 years old in 2022, was the son of Randall and Tisha, born in Arizona before moving to the state of Washington. His father ended his own life when Logan was 12, and Logan went downhill from there. And see, this is the part in the story when, you know, it kind of goes from, like, young man with, with, like, mental health issues to something more. Because he had killed before. In 2018, Spokane, Washington, Logan was identified as a suspect in a fatal stabbing. What Logan said was this. He was walking to his work at McDonald's at midnight when some random guy just attacked him, started baiting seven shades of shite out of him. Logan just so happened to have a small knife on him and, in self-defense, stabbed, stabbed him, stabbed him multiple times. Then this attacker ran off and he later died. This attacker slash victim was Corey Ward, 30 years old. Logan said it was in self-defense and he refused to take a polygraph, but he was never charged. Corey Ward's family have disagreed with this, saying it was completely out of character for Corey. Corey was a very hard worker, but when not at work, he was lazy as all heck. Corey wouldn't attack or start a fight or anything. It should be noted that Corey was in his apartment, not just roaming the streets. In fact, it's thought that maybe what could have possibly happened is that Logan was outside Corey's apartment and was like messing with his car, you know, scratching it up, whatever. Corey looked out his apartment window, seen this, decided to run down and give this guy a knuckle sandwich. They got into a fight and Logan in self-defense killed him. That Logan maybe was looking for an excuse to kill someone. Then the story gets um, just like a little bit stranger. In October 2019, Logan flew from Denver to Paris and stayed for two weeks. In June 2021, he flew from Chicago to Lisbon, stayed for almost five months, flying from Munich to Reykjavik to Boston in November 2021. He'd stayed in Europe for five months doing who knows what. Tra uh, by all accounts, it seems like he was traveling around Europe. No one knows. What he was doing no one knows what he if he was working where he got the money for this logan always grew up poor and most he ever worked was at mcdonald's which probably wouldn't have paid terribly well to give you the ability to travel around europe for five months so logan then arrived back in america in november 2021 and he was due to fly again back to europe he was due to fly from newark airport to reykjavik in february 2022 but he didn't show up for the flight at that stage he was in Concord, New Hampshire. So you have this like international man of mystery who is a killer and no one knows what he was doing the entire time. Logan, that's what I'm saying, man. For him to be moving to all these different locations all around, all around the world, 
That just make me think that this dude was goddamn uh, doing some stuff he ain't had no business. Whether it be some murders that we don't know about or he was robbing people, burglarizing or uh, uh, something, uh, dealing with drugs. Ain't no telling with this dude, man. He is like a mystery man. And that is very mysterious for him to keep moving to these different locations throughout that time. And just all around the world, not even just one continent. This dude getting on planes flying overseas and back overseas again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. This dude, this is a disturbing case of Logan Clegg. Logan ended up in Concord, New Hampshire, when he returned to America in November 2021. And he ended up working at a McDonald's under the name Arthur Kelly. His co-worker said he was quiet, had no friends, but... You know, was a hard worker, always showed up, was never late. He worked at McDonald's from November 21 to February 22 when he left, saying he had gotten a new job, but like not giving any more detail than that. Now his co-workers would say he had anger issues. He was like a pretty unpleasant guy. He was always, he'd always like flip the lid, was shouting and roaring. He was very protective over his like little backpack. Who knows what he had in there. And yeah, mainly one thing they said was, they wouldn't be surprised to find out he was a serial killer. It mm. appears he'd been living in the woods full time. So tracking this very dangerous person, where was he now? Now that, you know, after the reeds were killed, they had his name, they had his identity, but not where he was, because he wasn't in Concord. Where is he? They soon learned that Arthur Kelly had purchased a bus ticket from Boston to Albany, and then switched to go to Burlington, Vermont. What he did then, they, they didn't know, but they did soon learn that he had purchased a flight ticket to fly from uh, New York JFK to Berlin, Germany in October. The address he had used to purchase that flight ticket was a phony address that led to a courthouse in Burlington, but he had used a real number. The, the number was from a burner phone, but they could still track that phone. On October 11th, it was pinging from the woods just outside the city of Burlington. Following the pings, it led them to the city, and they eventually saw him at a price chopper, a grocery store. They followed him to a library, and that's where the police struck. Negative. Still, 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 still. We're gonna have the two plain clothes guys make the approach, and we'll just be there. Do not move. Do not what? Do not move. 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 Do it's just so cool, y'all. I'm I'm so thankful to be alive in like 2024, man. Well, all that different methods and technology that these police officers use to track this man down to this library. It's so cool, man. We really blessed to be in the times that we in, my brothers and sisters. Because back in goddamn, let's just say 1973, this would have not been as easy as it is today to freaking track somebody's movements like this. But let's go. Good to get all the answers you want. He was arrested and taken into custody. When questioned, he denied having anything to do with the double murder of the Reeds. Liar. In his possession at the time of his arrest was a handgun, believed to be the murder weapon, the gun he used to shoot Stephen and Wendy Reed. Um, he had a fake Romanian passport under the name Claude Zemo. Claude Zemo, lady. Where he got that? He had no valid, like, identif identification for, like, himself. And he had $7,000, over $7,000 in cash. Who knows where he got that money? He must have been working very hard at McDonald's. I don't think so. See, how he hadn't worked there since February. Where he got this money, nobody knows. It's like a Bourne movie with the fake passports and the gun and the money. A mystery, but an unsettling one. 
They then later found his tent and his campsite in the woods outside Burlington, just like it was in Concord. And their phone chargers, food, other items, Mountain Dew Code Red, of course, lots of it. And see, this probably how this dude was living everywhere he went, all around, all around the world. Like, he probably was going everywhere he went, at least in the United States, he probably was living off in the woods at a damn campsite with a tent and doing God knows what to the innocent public out here. You know what I'm saying, man? Hell no. This dude right here, man, he is a menace to society. He is a mysterious menace to society. Logan Clegg pleaded not guilty to the charges, which were two counts of second-degree murder. Logan's trial began in 2023. The prosecution had, well, pretty much everything I laid out for you. Investigators conducted an interview of him on October 12th of 2022. During the interview, he claimed he was not in Concord on April 18th of 2022. He claimed that he had left Concord in February or March. He claimed he didn't use a tent while in Concord. He claimed that he didn't stay in the wooded area near Alton Woods or the wooded area along the Marsh Loop Trail. He even denied knowing the name Arthur Kelly. He denied having a gun. And you will learn that despite being confronted with the information that investigators had learned over the months long investigation, the defendant continued to try to conceal his murders. His defense, not really a whole amount of much. In fact, other than kind of just word vomiting, they could basically only come up with, well, ballistic science can't tell you like a hundred million thousand percent you know, which bullets a gun came from. So therefore, you know, the gun he had may not be the same one that was used to kill the Reeds when... Yeah, pretty sure it can. Basically, the defense was like, science is fake. Fake news. He had nothing <laughs> to do with the Reeds. He was not in hiding from a murder. He was hiding from a probation violation out of Utah. She could not count the number of possible guns that were out there that could have fired the bullets that killed the Reeds. And she could not say that Logan's Clegg, Logan Clegg's gun was the gun that fired it. I know. Uh These goddamn defense attorneys just kill me sometime, man. No pun intended. But they be like, dude, like lady, you know this man guilty as a motherfucker. You know he did it. In your heart of heart. And probably in your brain of brains, you know he did it. But you just, you got to make that check, I guess. It's all about the check, man. That's what it's about, man. Because these lawyers out here getting money. But I couldn't be a defense. I could be a, a defense attorney, but I couldn't be a defense attorney if I know I'm lying. And I know my, did this dude fucking kill these people. I can't, it just my heart and in my soul, my my integrity, I'm going to tell the goddamn truth, so I can't defend a murderer out there. I could be a defense attorney if you really didn't do it or if I really feel like you ain't do it. But this lady know this man ain't do uh Well, she know this man did this shit. She know there's no possible way that that damn gun could, uh, like Mike said, in a hundred uh, billions of uh, a tenth of a time that it's possible that maybe this wasn't a gun. Man, cut it out, lady. You know that man did that shit, man. Have some goddamn respect about your damn self. <laughs> For real, man. Cut it out, man. Let's go, y'all. Um, but no, they could, they could pretty definitively tell it was the murder weapon and that he had used it. And so the trial did not go well for old Logan Cla Claude Zemo. Interesting name, I'll give him that. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. You say you find the defendant guilty? Yes. So say you all, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Would you please say aloud? Yes. 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 Thank you. In late 2023, Logan Clegg was found guilty on all charges, and he received two sentences of 50 years to life in prison for what he did to a beloved couple who just wanted to help people. Those detectives did everything in their power in the last year to cheat me out of getting a proper trial. 
If the Supreme Court agrees with me, then I may very well get a new trial. I can promise with confidence that my innocence will be made clear and that I will win. Logan Clegg is a stone-cold, violent murderer, nothing more. He shot and killed Stephen Wendy, Wendy Reed for no reason. His statements today ring hollow. He deserves nothing less than a sentence that fully re reflects the magnitude of his crimes. And for that reason, I'm going to fully impose the sentences as recommended by the state. On charge ID 2027584, a finding of guilty is entered. The defendant is found The real story of Logan Clegg is a bizarre mystery. He killed three people, one of which is like dubious as to what exactly is true. Now, as I said, charges were never pressed against him, but it just seems to be very weird as to what exactly happened. But the fact I gotta speak on that real quick too, y'all, because I ain't say nothing about that. That yeah, that is fucking crazy from the beginning. He already have murdered somebody, man. I believe he murdered him. I don't believe all that self-defense shit. Now the plot twist, the crazy part of what Mike was saying was he provoked this dude to attack him so he could argue that it was self-defense. All I'm saying is it's something fishy going on with his first murder before he even murdered this couple. Like, man, we, I just feel like we, we as a whole, all of us, my brothers and sisters, justice system, the people, everybody, just as human beings, can we do better, man? Can we just do better as far as like figuring out these, these, these damn murderers before they actually get out of control with it or before they actually even murder the first person? You know what I'm saying? Can we, I, it may be, all I'm saying is, long story short, story long. Maybe the last two murders could have been prevented if we would have caught on to his first murder. I don't know, man. It's a lot of ifs when it comes to life, y'all. If, if was a filth, goddammit, boy, all our ass be on the floor, passed out, drunk as hell. Let's finish it up. He killed two in the way he did his chilling, and he almost got away with it. Very nearly almost got away with it, escaping America to Europe. It was only like one bank statement. And one got on vitamin, him purchasing vitamins that led to them finding out his real name. Why he killed the Reeds uh, is unknown. There's theories, uh, maybe it was really race related. They were a biracial, a mixed race couple. Um, but it's, there's never any kind of proof that Logan would have cared about that. Um, other things, maybe they got into, they met each other on the trail and they got into some kind of argument. Um, maybe that happened or maybe he was just a serial killer. Budding or actual serial killer who murdered two people. On one side, you could say, well, you know, he was a young man, he was mentally ill, and he just shot them. But then on the other hand, it's like, well, maybe he was, but he also knew very well how to hide what he had done and get away with it for a very long time. How he had seven grand on cash in him, nobody knows. I mean, he had been known to do burglaries, armed burglaries, uh, so maybe he, he probably likely stole that money. How was he able to travel so much? Who knows? Why he traveled so much? Who knows? What he was doing when he traveled? Again, did he kill other people out in there in them woods? Maybe. Logan has like a lot of similarities to other serial killers. Namely how he was able to go on the run, how he camped out in the woods, he was able to hide his identity, he left very little trace of anything behind. Israel Keys comes to mind, a man who traveled all over America and to places outside of America like Canada and Mexico, murdering people, just randomly killing people. Israel Keys often lived in the woods, didn't leave a trace behind, had murder kits all around the place, campsites. It's very strange. <laughs> Armed burglaries, serial killer speciality, something Logan did at least twice. So much about Logan we do not know where he was, what he was doing, and I wouldn't be surprised to find out he killed elsewhere. So yeah, uh, there you go, that's that's the story of Logan Clegg, Shine, um, and it's ultimately incredibly tragic what happened to such a beloved couple, the Reeds who just wanted to give back and did give back their entire lives to try and help people in need around the world. So, uh, Logan Clegg, monster. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here uh, with me as always. Uh, means a lot to me. Let me know your thoughts on this case down, down, down below. And uh, yeah, listen, uh, please check out the That Chapter podcast, which has a new episode out every Monday morning. And you can check out my other stuff in the description if you want. But, you know, you do you. 
Next video will be out in a couple of days, so please give it a goo, but until then, take care of each other and yourselves. Do it for me, because I love you. My kid. I'm just gonna give y'all what I think, man. We just gonna start off right here with what I think of this case, man. What I think of Logan. I think Logan got a lot of bodies under his belt, y'all. Like, I think he have killed a lot of people all over the world, man. And like Mike was saying, man, there's a lot of uh, serial killers who out there who you'll, you'll catch them for one murder or two murders and come to find out they got 20 more under their belt. You know what I'm saying? They have been murdering for years and decades now. And I feel like he is of that same ilk. And with all that moving around, then it seemed like wherever he was moving around to, he was ducked off in the woods. Nobody knew his name. Nobody knew nothing. You know what I'm saying? He away from society. Then he just pop up and randomly murder people. And Mike kind of got away from it at the uh, end of the story. But I just want to say one more time, rest in peace to that beautiful couple, man. Rest in peace to them, man. Like I said, y'all, it is so freaking sad to see older people, man, especially people like this who have just enjoyed and just lived such a great life, and now they get to the pinnacle of their life where they can finally just exhale and say, Whew, I did everything that I wanted to do or had to do or whatever that God was willing for me to do, and now I can just live the rest of my days just chilling in the frisky era you know what i'm saying in my heydays just chilling you know what i'm saying in my golden age and then this end up happening to them after all that time all these years all these 60 plus years of being on this planet earth and then somebody come kill them i just hate that man and dude is so it's him y'all this one of them ones well i'm positive it's this him it's too much stuff pointing towards him and the freaking gun would really like just let us know yeah it is him and the damn defense lawyer man like lady come on man she's just trying to get a check y'all long story short she just short story long she just there to get a freaking check because she know he did it too man these defense these defense uh attorneys out here man boy they, some of them they they, they just me personally i feel like they be like insulting they be insulting all intelligence one but they also be like disrespecting or undermining or whatever word i'm trying to use their own integrity you know what i'm saying man like dude you ain't got that much respect for yourself to to the point where you would take some money to freaking lie for a freaking murderer that's not me i can't freaking do that i can't do that y'all hell no nah. ain't no freaking money in the world no 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 but i digress my brothers and sisters man i hey y'all know how i am man i can sit right here and talk to y'all for the next goddamn 10 15 20 30 minutes about this store man it was another great ex of lint taste store from mike from that chapter hey i'm so happy to be back watching his videos every week man i'm so just happy to be back with y'all man we almost at 2,000 subscribers my brothers and sisters so y'all just make sure that y'all continue to hit that like button comment and if you ain't subscribed yet go on subscribe man so you can help us get to that 2,000 and beyond and until then my friends i'm gonna leave y'all with this Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.